Hello and welcome to our next lecture, the International Mobility Program, Open Work Permit. What is the International Mobility Program? Under the International Mobility Program, an Open Work Permit enables a person to work for any employer for a specific period of time. An Open Restricted Permit may, however, restrict the occupation or location, but not the employer. An open work permit can be issued only to a foreign national exempt from the labor market impact assessment, LMIA. A foreign national may apply for an open work permit outside of Canada, at the port of entry, or after arrival to Canada, as per program requirements. We're going to check the website when they have more information about this program and how both the employer and the temporary worker can benefit from this. There are also jobs exempt from the LMIA. You may be exempt from needing an LMIA for express entry if your current temporary job is LMIA exempt. Stays a specific employer or employers, or skilled trade jobs in this case, up to two employers can make a job offer. And that's going to apply only for skilled trade jobs. Your job can also be exempt from LMIA if it's covered by an international agreement like the NAFTA and the GSTS or any other non-trade agreement. If it's covered by an agreement between Canada and a province or territory, this includes significant investment projects. You can also be exempt for Canadian interest reasons, like you're going to bring significant benefit to Canada, reciprocal employment designated by the minister, or by charity and religious work, not including volunteers, of course. And there's a little note, uh, jobs that are exempt from needing LMI still need a work permit, okay? So the fact that you don't need an LMI doesn't preclude for the fact that you still need to go for an application for a work permit. And now let's take a look at the website. Here we are at the website, the information for the employers. And basically, what we see here is hire temporary workers through the in, in International Mobility Program. It tells you the information about what you can do as an employer and mention the extension of LMIA, but these are based on the broader economic, cultural and competitive advantage for Canada and the reciprocal benefit enjoyed by Canadians and permanent residents. So that's the set goal for this kind of program. You can find out about if you need an LMIA, and this is for employer, by clicking in this link or you can contact also the International Mobility Worker Unit by clicking this link and we're going to see later on these pages in the website and then also mention to the employer that they need to submit an offer of employment in most cases to hire a temporary worker through the IMP you must pay the employer compliance fee of 230 that's the actual price and submit an offer of employment form through the employer portal and we will see also what is the employer portal but that information is good to be referred if any if you contact any Canadian employer they don't know what to do you should be able to refer them to this kind of link so they can check the information and do the process from their side there are some extensions for the LMI also related to the international mobility program um, for open work permits if you hire a temporary worker who has an open work permit, you don't need to submit an offer of employment form or pay the employer compliance fee. So if you have a job already and the other employer wants to hire you, well, if you have an open work permit, they don't need to go through the payment of fees. So make that make it easy for them to be able to hire you. And employer compliance sections, and here, some employers don't need to use the employer portal or are exempt from the employer compliance fee. And in this link, we're going to see which one are those. And then after the employer submit the offer of employment, yeah, they have all the information here. I mentioned, I mentioned the letter of introduction. If they are outside of Canada for the candidates and a new work permit if they are living in Canada or applying at the time of entry in Canada. So. That's the situation that happened after the offer of employment is submitted through the employer portal. And they just need to read this information so they know what to do. Okay. Other important hiring information for the employer is in the case that 
the candidate or the foreign worker need a visitor visa or an ETA, the electronic travel authorization, depending on the country of residence, and also information about that the temporary worker may go or may need actually to present a medical examination in the application process, and of course, more information for the foreign workers and also for the employer. All right. So these are the link of this uh, page in the website. Hire temporary worker through the International Mobility Program, and the link of this article is provided in the lecture. If we continue with other pages, we have the pages find out if you need a labor market impact assessment, and that's a very good uh, link to give to the employer if they are not familiar with the temporary foreign worker program. And here you just detail everything about the program. Some questions about the LMIA, if they want to review the extension codes, and also information about how to contact the International Mobility Workers Unit if they have any questions. Okay, And here you can see the email. You click here, you're going to see the email, so the employer can use that to contact this unit for more information about how the program works. And also, he uh, mentioned something about that opinions are issued within two weeks service standard. So, normally, the opinion, the information that the employer might require from this unit will be issued in two weeks. So, it's pretty good. Okay? And here, we have a copy of the request form in the PDF form. Let's take a look at it. And this is the form that the employer needs to fill out. It's going to request an opinion of a work permit or MIA section. Okay? So this is the form. It's already in the resource page of the lecture. But the employer can also find it in the website. So you have the information of the business, the address, the business phone number, the contact person in the business, the email address business website, the size of the business in Canada, how many employees, the size of the business abroad if they are an employer that have units or offices outside of Canada, and the main activities of the business. Then the form requests the information for the foreign worker, the UCI if they apply already for any immigration program, family name, citizenship, country of residence, and you can see date of birth, all the information has to be filled out completely. And the details of intended work in Canada, they need to specific, specify if it's a work permit extension or if LMI extension. And then the information about the job. They have the job title, the NOC, the employment location, the duration of the employment, the total duration here, the duties. And they have to match the NOC, of course, the main Education requirements, the skill and experience is require any certifications, etc., etc., etc. A lot of information here, and again, all this information also has to include the supporting documentation with the letter for, from the employer, the copy of the job offer or copy of contract, copy of the identification or page of the passport, copy of the curriculum vitae or resume, and other information if applicable. Then they have some information about the privacy statement here. And finally, you need to be able to sign your full name as in your passport and to make sure that all the form, all the questions ha has been filled out completely so they can process this request. So this is the form. Uh, it's mostly the employer and some information from the employee, but it's mostly for the employer to request and to understand if they are LMI extension or the word permit extension, okay? So I hope you enjoy this lecture and thank you very much.